Yeah, Jason, we really spent a lot of time out here yesterday listening and sitting with the folks who live here in Bowling Green, hugging them as they really walked us through the memory of that terrifying night. Now, I got to tell you, some were called the screams, some were called the neighbors that they lost. But among all that pain are incredible stories of survival. Watch you guys step. Of course. The rubble siding, insulation and glass we're walking on was once this Bowling Green man's bedroom. My dad like, had to like, push it because there was something blocking it, I guess. We opened the door and we see nothing. Nothing, nothing left of the house. He's just walking through what's left for the first time since Saturday morning. That was the last time he was inside with all six of his family members huddled together in here. So this is the closet you guys were hiding in? Yes, yes. Uh, I was right here. My little sister was right here. My other sister was right here. My, my little brother was right here. My dad and my mom. I had my two sisters under my arms like this. My dad and my mom were covering my little brother. And we're just praying to God that we, we make it. How incredible is it for you today to know that the rest of the house outside of this room is gone, but this is still somehow standing? That's, I, I don't believe it still. It's just, I don't know, like just a higher power of God. We had an angel over us. We're lucky. Two houses down. The windows blew out, the roof was starting to come in. Himo Barajamovic echoes that same gratitude. I'm glad to be here. My mom, my father, my brothers, my sisters, I can hug them, I can speak to them, I can see them. Even though a massive semi-truck sits inches from where he was sleeping. You just can't really believe it. You can't really, you know, I'm, you question yourself like, am I really still here? The reality is there are dozens who can't say the same. Among the dead across the state of Kentucky, at least 15 died in Bowling Green. You know, we've seen a nightmare pretty much. And people who, who, who live this, this is going to stay with us for the rest of their life. Even days after the storm has passed, some barely know where to start. Many families whose homes were wiped out are sleeping at a nearby school, while emergency crews remain zeroed in on a massive recovery effort. They have to literally take a house apart in order to see that yes, that's what's that's what's happening. We're 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 still missing people, and so they're uh, we need to find them. But those that can help are neighbors are trying to make a dent on the cleanup, while those who suffered grieve and try to process the memory of those terrifying few minutes. We could hear people screaming everywhere, like people were just like screaming for help and and you can hear babies crying you can I mean it was something out of a movie man like I don't know I can't believe this is all oh, this is real life like I feel like this is a bad dream that I'm gonna wake up from but I don't think that's gonna happen now of the 15 that we mentioned passed here in Warren County 11 of those actually died right down this road here. Now we've noticed this morning the National Guard is on site. They're here to help keep this community clear and allow city leaders to keep doing their job, but also focus on getting those survivors the help they need, whether that's shelter, food, water, or especially warmth during these cold mornings that we're seeing here in Bowling Green. Jason.